So if you've got multiple Windows machines on the same local area network and you wanna be able to share files between them, for example, if you have a laptop and a desktop, or if you have two desktops that you do work between the two of them very often, like I do with my gaming computer and my streaming computer, using the Windows file sharing feature may be extremely helpful for you, but unfortunately the setup of it is not the greatest and it can be extremely inconsistent. Every time I go ahead and do a fresh Windows install uh, or upgrade, I end up having to redo all of my network file sharing settings and every time I run into a different issue. But this time around, I think I've found the best way to get it done um, to enable the full feature set of the file sharing. So the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and go to the advanced sharing options in Windows. Now on Windows 11, this is in the new settings menu. On Windows 10, it is gonna be in the old control panel. However, the layouts of them are almost the exact same, so you should be able to follow along no problem. What you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you have your network discovery as on. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have file and printer sharing on as well. Public networks, you're not gonna to need to worry about that for this setup um, because you're gonna to wanna to make sure that all of your personal computers are on the private network and have your network set as private on Windows. Now, if you accidentally set up your network as a public network, you can go ahead and switch that by going to the network and internet section, clicking on properties and changing it to private network. Now, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to all networks. You're gonna wanna make sure that you have password protected sharing off. Um, this is one of the things that I run into a bunch of issues with, although with the solution that I'm trying now, it should work completely fine um, and will give you a little bit more security. But if you do have a good network, you're not gonna have to worry about this. And public folder sharing is entirely different. It'll basically create a set of public folders that you can always throw things into so you don't have to share any of your local drives. This is really good if you have people that you're sharing things with and you don't wanna share your whole computer or a whole drive. But if this is mainly for yourself and people that you trust, you don't really have to worry about that. Make sure you do these settings on all of the computers that you want to be able to participate in the file sharing, whether they're gonna be the host or the one accessing the files. Um, make sure you have it done no matter which version of Windows they're on. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually share one of the drives on my computer. You can share either drives entirely, you can share specific folders within those drives. Um, so let's go ahead first and show you how sharing a drive works. Go to this, uh, go to this PC on your computer. Now you're gonna go ahead and find the drive you wanna share. We'll do my uh, local disk M for example. We're gonna right click that and we're gonna do give access to or advanced sharing. You can also do properties. It'll bring you to the same place. So if you do properties, you do sharing, you're gonna see this screen here. Now we can see the drive is not shared. So we're gonna go to advanced sharing. We're gonna go to share this folder, permissions, and I wanna be able to not only read the files, but I wanna be able to delete them, move them or what have you. So I'm gonna do allow for full control on everyone, press OK, press OK, and now you can see here that the M drive is now shared. Now if we hop back over to my laptop, we can go ahead and go to the File Explorer. You're gonna to go to the network, and you're gonna let this refresh. Now as you can see here, my desktop is not appearing. My desktop is named Dimitri Desktop. It's not appearing here for some reason, and sometimes Windows does that, especially when you change settings for the first time if you don't do a restart but there is a way for you to access it. All you have to do is go to the uh, address bar up here, do backslash, backslash, and then you do the name. So it's gonna be Dimitri Desktop, you can see mine here. And then it's gonna ask you for network credentials. Now this is where most people get stuck because the way that Windows handles these network credentials is absolutely terrible. Before, when they didn't require you to sign in to an account to use Windows, it was much easier because all you have to do was type in the username and password that you would use on that local computer. But now with having all of these different uh, emails and you know using a PIN versus a password, it leads to a lot of confusion. And that's where my next steps are gonna be coming in. So if we go back to my desktop, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go to the other users section of Windows. Now, as you can see, I've already done this, but what you wanna do is you wanna create an account and its main purpose is going to be, it's a local account, and it's going to be the, a way for you to basically log into this computer from other computers. 
Now to do a local account, you go ahead and you go to add account. You do, I don't have this person signing information. Then you do add a user without a Microsoft account. You can go ahead and create their name, their passwords, and then it's gonna make you do a bunch of security questions. I made mine very obvious as to what it's for. This is my share account. Um, I created a password for that. And it doesn't have to be an administrator, it can be a standard account. Now, if we go back to my laptop, I can go ahead and ensure that I log in with that username. So we're gonna go ahead and go to more choices here. If it's already filled in, if it's not, you'll just see it like this. We're gonna go ahead and put the uh, computer name in. So Dimitri desktop. And then you're gonna do a backslash and then you're gonna do the username. And then we're gonna go ahead and put in the password. I put a very complex password in here. And if I press okay, there we go. We have access to all of the folders or all the drives in this case that I have shared over the network to this computer. I can go ahead and open up one of these drives, see all of the things that I have here and access all of my files very easily. This feature is essential to the way that I create all of my YouTube videos because I record all of the audio um, and parts of the screen recordings all on my streaming computer, but I do all of my editing on my gaming computer. So this allows me to access all those files while I'm editing without having to actually move the files over to my gaming computer. I can just read them over the network. It's very, very simple and very easy to do. And it really streamlines my whole video creation process. So to give you a little idea of how this works and how I utilize this for my YouTube videos, I am currently editing this video. And as you can see here, I have an MKV file, which is from OBS. So if I go ahead and go to my file explorer, I go to my server, I go to my folder that I store all my YouTube stuff in. These are all of the videos that I record using OBS um, and pull those into DaVinci um, for editing. So if I go ahead and I grab this, or actually this is what's recording right now. Um, let's say I grab this one and I just go ahead and drop it onto my timeline and there we go. So I am editing a video from my other computer. Um, the performance is totally fine. I would highly suggest that you don't store the files if you're going to be doing something like this on an external or a very slow drive. Um, I actually have these on a pretty good hard drive, but if I wanted it to be faster, I'd put them on an SSD um, in that system. But this stuff works really, really well. And like I said, I've been using this basically since I started doing my YouTube videos two years ago. And it's the way that I keep all of my stuff kind of organized and without kind of cluttering up my gaming computer or main computer here. And I hope this ends up helping you as much as it helps me. If it did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like, subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. Big thanks to my patron sponsors, Thought Slime and Step Back, and thank you for watching this video. If you want to see any of my other Windows-related videos or anything related to computers, you can go ahead and check out this playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next Saturday.